Welcome to the Ed Newsstand Podcast. I'm your host, Troy Reynolds. This is Season 3, Episode 31 of the podcast, and the episode is titled Raindrop.io. This is the seventh episode in my series of online bookmarks. Raindrop.io might not have the name recognition of some of the other digital bookmarks that I've talked about, but it definitely has the staying power. Raindrop.io has one of the more intuitive and comfortable layouts that I've ever seen. It also is available on any platform and within any browser extension that you might use, from Google to Opera to Edge. It's an app on Apple, Android, and Windows. And finally, the website lets you add any material from your computer. I was really happily surprised when I took a deeper look at Raindrop.io, and I think you will be too. Let's not waste any more time. Let's dive in. This is the last digital bookmark that I'm going to cover in my series of digital bookmarks. And I'll admit that before I created my list, um, I was unfamiliar with raindrop.io. But as I started to look through lists and do more research on more popular digital bookmarking sites, a lot of the ones that I've already talked about came up. But raindrop.io was on every list. And like I said, while I was unfamiliar with it, when I did research it a little bit more, I found out that it has almost all of the qualities that I've already talked about in bookmarking or just online notebooks. So I'm going to give you a mini demonstration of raindrop.io and go through all of the resources that I have because I think that you might find that it's a really perfect digital bookmarking service that for you um, based on some of the ones I've talked about. Maybe there's too much going on in some of the other ones or maybe there isn't enough happening. Raindrop.io seems to fall kind of right in the middle. It's a beautiful layout. Uh, the uh, Extension is really nice and easy to use. The way that it tags and puts into different notebooks is really nice. So I'm going to get into raindrop.io in just a few minutes, but let me go through some of the links that I have in this week's newsletter. The first link, as always, over on the left-hand side is the Chrome extension. So you can see here it says Add to Chrome. If you click on that, it will take you right to the Chrome extension, and you can scroll down and see some of the images that are available. And then it will walk you through some of the all-in-one bookmark manager that it does. Again, save anything to the web, clipping articles, photos, videos, PDFs, pages from the web, and different apps, different theme collections, full text search in a permanent library. Also, you can set up for teams or individuals. The next link here, if you click on it right below the Add to Chrome, is the logo for raindrop.io. That will take you right to the blog. And in the blog, the blog will tell you about any new updates that are happening. And actually, three days ago, there was a brand new update to raindrop.io, which allowed you to make your pages public or embed your pages into your own personal website. So I'll show you kind of how to do that here in just a few minutes. Underneath the blog is a link to the Apple app. So if you click on Download in the App Store, it will take you right to the a link to the raindrop.io app. If you're looking at this on your mobile device or on your uh, like a tablet device, it will take you right to the app store to be able to download the app. At the very bottom of the left-hand column is where you can click on all the different extensions, apps, all of those things for raindrop.io. Once you click on that link, you'll be able to see all the different extensions that you can put raindrop.io in. You can put it in Chrome, Firefox, Safari. If you use the Opera browser, if you are a Microsoft Edge user, there's also a raindrop.io bookmarklet, which I've talked about bookmarklets in the past. They're similar to an extension, just maybe a little bit faster for you to use. They go up in your bookmarks bar. And then there are links to the iOS and Android app. There are also desktop apps for Mac and for Windows. Right in the middle of the screen is a layout for raindrop.io. So if you really want to see what it looks like, you can click on the link here and it will take you to a Google drawing that I've set up. And the Google drawing that I have set up has all of these numbers all over a layout of raindrop.io's dashboard. And then it will talk about all of the different features within raindrop.io. So you can see the collections there. It will show you how to create a new collection, how to add filters and tags, and how those are laid out, the different bookmarks and files you can upload, the search feature within raindrop.io, how to add a new item, share and collaborate on those items that you might have how to change the appearance of the collection once you've curated it, and then finally, how to access your profile and settings. Over on the right-hand side, I have a link to Get Started, which will walk you through some of the features that are available within raindrop.io, from nesting your collections to uploading media and files, to the different merge tags that are available, to the batch processing that can happen, importing and exporting your uh, different, all of your bookmarks, 
manual sorting of your bookmarks, and then the various themes that are available in raindrop.io. So if you click on Get Started, it will take you right to their welcome site, and you can see here all of the different basics. You can learn how, um, how to get started with it, how to migrate things into raindrop.io, and then how to export your raindrop.io bookmarklet somewhere else. And as you click through here, you can go to the About section, how to install the extension, how to download the app, import data, and then just the basics of your account and your settings. As you move down farther, you'll see how you can use raindrop.io and the various integrations and subscriptions that are available within their website and their app. On the right-hand side, you can watch the little short 30-second intro video. There isn't any talking or anything. It's just a short little walkthrough video for you on raindrop.io to, to give you a little bit more visuals about how the app and the website look. And then at the very bottom, if you click on that, it will take you right to raindrop.io. And this is where you can start to sign up. And so you'll see um, a lot of the GIFs that are on their site showing you how the website and the app looks. And it'll give you a little bit more of a description about the website. Now that I've walked through all of the links that are available in this week's newsletter, let's actually get to what raindrop.io looks like and how it works. So the first thing we'll do is let's look at the extension. So I'm on the New York Times website and I have this article on languishing and I've installed the extension up at the top and it's just a cloud. So you can see here, here's my raindrop.io cloud extension up in my toolbar. If I click on the extension, raindrop.io opens up and then you can see here that it shows it looks just like my layout. Now, when you first set up raindrop.io, it will give you the option to set it up as a mini app so it will look just like the website or you can set it up like the clipper. So we'll kind of look at both examples. I set up mine as a mini app, but let's take a look at how what it looks like as a clipper. So now I've changed it to set up as a clipper and then I have some other features in here that I can change, but I'm just gonna show you the difference between the two. So when I click on the raindrop.io extension, you can see now it's just a little clip. And so it gives me the title of the article, it gives me a brief description, and then it, I have to decide which collection I wanna put it in. I already have a couple of collections, my Bitmovie review Instagram site and any digital bookmarks that I have already found or sorted. If I want to create a new collection, I just type up in the top and I'm just gonna type New York Times and I can click the plus and I can create this new collection. Now it is set as a new collection, I can add any tags, so you can see now that I've added a few tags for the article itself. So when I go back into raindrop.io, I can search by tags and then it gives me the URL to the article. And if I really want to add this article to my favorites, I have a little box here I'm gonna check and then send it right to my favorites. So it's like starring it and having quicker access to it than having to access the collection or finding it through a tag. And when I'm all done, I just click save. Now the article has been saved in my raindrop.io dashboard. If I click on the extension again, you can see here now that it, you can see that everything has been saved and right down here in the bottom left corner, it says remove and any changes I make, it automatically saves. So the last update here was 205 and it automatically saved it. Now let's take a look at what it looks like in the mini app. So you can see here now in my mini app, this is what it looks like. You can see that it says up at the top that it has been saved. I have the little heart because I added it to my favorites. It still gives me the time and it gives me the little website from which I saved it. So it says down here, New York Times, and then it also has some of these different tags that I added onto it. If I click on the top here, I can open this in a new tab. I can preview what it looks like. And if I choose edit, then it will give me some of the changes and edits that maybe I wanna to make to it. And then over on the side here, I can change some of the renaming of the article, and then I can change some of the layouts of my article. And I'll get into some of these layouts here in a minute. So as far as the extension goes in your toolbar, you're gonna to have to figure out whether you wanna use the mini app look or whether you wanna use the clipper look. I kinda of like the mini app look because then I can access some of my other articles that maybe I had before uh, right here and, and quickly get to those. Whereas with the clipper, it's just clipping the article itself. Now let's go into raindrop.io and see what things look like in the dashboard. So I'm in the dashboard right now and you can see that um, it looks similar to the mini app that I just showed you in the extension. At the very top is my bookmark that I just saved from the New York Times. You can see it has it gives me the website, it gives me a timestamp and it tells me which collection to which I have saved it. One of the really cool things that I like about raindrop.io is you can see here that I have changed the icon next to like Digo and Toby and Symbaloo. I can change the icon for the New York Times. So if I go in here and I go down to change icon, I can search for different icons. So maybe I wanna say news. And then as I search for news, now 
I can change the different icon. Look, we you've, you've got Reddit, you've got a Fox. There's all kinds of different stuff. There's an RSS feed. So maybe I subscribe to an RSS feed and that goes right into my bookmarks and raindrop.io. I could set it, set it as an RSS feed, but I'm just gonna click on, let's say like a newspaper. Now you can see it automatically over on the left-hand side, change my icon to be a, a little newspaper. And then over here in the article itself, the icon changed from just a folder to um, this little newspaper that I changed it to. So one thing that's really cool about all of this, if I go into my digital bookmarks, so here's my collection of digital bookmarks. Now I have changed this out to be a mood board. That is the layout that I have chosen because I think it looks a lot nicer. But if I go up over on the right hand side, this is where my layouts are. And the default is a list and everybody does a list, but lists are kind of boring. So I can change it to cards if I want to. This is kind of nice. They're all the same size. They give you um, a little image of the logo. Maybe I want to change it to headlines. This makes it, strips it down even more from the list and just shows you links to the different pages in your collections. But I really like the mood board because it changes things in a whole different way. It gives me different sizes. It gives me different layouts. It gives me longer descriptions or shorter descriptions, depends on how the website looks. And then I can choose to manually sort these I can, so I can drag and drop them, which is really awesome. And then I can sort them by date, by name, or by site from A to Z. But the awesome thing is I can literally just take this, drag it around and move it to wherever I want. So I think that's pretty cool. Now, one really cool thing, and this is really nice for digital bookmarks and that I, the ones that I've talked about over the series, but if I go into my movies, I'll check this out. I changed this one from cards to mood board. Now, this is really awesome because it gives me like like posters of for the movies that I, I have watched or looked at. And it's awesome because it gives me a brief description of the movie. It shows me the poster. It's really visually appealing. Uh, so this is really awesome. And then I can choose how I want things to look in my mood board. So I can choose to take off the cover, the title, the description. I can increase the size of the covers if I want to or decrease the size. So for me, I really prefer looking at my links in the mood board. So now the last thing that raindrop.io talked about was this new sharing feature and, the, and your ability to embed your uh, raindrop.io board somewhere else. If you click on the share button in the top right corner, you have the option to change it to a public page or change it to collaboration if you want to share this, the, all of these links with other people. So if I click share, now anybody with the link can access this page. I can copy the URL, I can share it out on social media, I can email it to other people, I can give myself a little description of the, uh, to the public when they get the appearance. So I have a description and then I can click save. But the really awesome thing is down here at the bottom is my embed code. So here is my embed code. I can copy the code. I can change how it gets sorted, which is what I had set up. I can search by tag. I can change the appearance so I can do a dark theme if I want to, and it will change the appearance of my mood board. So there you go. I can also then just change it to an automatic theme depending on what time of day it is. So I copy the code. I open up a website that I can add a uh, an embed code to. I click on embed code uh, here in Google Sites as my example. And then it says embed from the web. I have embed code. I paste in the embed code. I click next and it will show me a short preview of raindrop.io. And then I can just insert this into my website. And then I can change how this looks. I can make this bigger or smaller. And it really shows me the board and the collection that I created in raindrop.io. So this is awesome. I really like this new update and this new feature that are available within raindrop.io to be able to embed all of my links into a website because they look beautiful. When you create it as a mood board, it just looks amazing. So that is one really cool feature about raindrop.io versus some of the other digital bookmarks that I've looked at and reviewed. So the last little feature about raindrop.io, if I click up here in the add button, you can see here that it wants to see text and images copied from my clipboard. I can say allow to that. I can paste URLs in here or I can upload or drop a file. So I can go and I can look for different files on my computer. So let's say I want to add this Apple resource. I can easily drop that in here. And then when it drops the resource in here, you can see it gives me a little image. I can change the icon of the image so I can add my own if I want to. I can paste it from a URL if I have one. So you don't have to just look at what the PDF looks like. I can move it to a different collection so I can add my own. I'll just add it to the New York Times one. I can add my tags in here. Let's call it an article. Good enough. Add it to my favorites and I'm all done. Then it's automatically saved. I can choose to remove if I want. And it's now in my bookmarks. So you can see over the New York Times, now I have two bookmarks in that collection. 
and I'm ready to go. So really, any resource that you have. Some of the other resources that I've talked about only allow PDFs or only allow images, raindrop.io, anything you find, whether it's a URL from a website or whether it's something that you currently have on your computer, all of those different things can be put into one collection. So a really awesome, powerful, cool tool that sets raindrop.io apart from some of the other digital bookmarks. As always, there are a couple of different features that you can use within raindrop.io and it depends on whether or not you're willing to pay for the service. So you can see here with the free version, you have unlimited bookmarks and unlimited collections that you can create, unlimited devices that you can view it on, where like last week, Evernote only allowed you two devices maximum. There are 26,000 different integrations. There are apps and extensions on any platform, no matter what you like to use, it easily integrates as an app or an extension. Share and collaborate easily, upload 60 meg worth of files per month, which is a fine size. I mean, if you're not uploading a lot of videos and audio, that should be pretty easy. However, if you are willing to subscribe for $28 a year, which is super cheap for a lot of different programs that you might try to subscribe to, you get everything that you get in the free plan, plus your full text search, the permanent library, all of your nested collections, meaning you can create um, your collection, but then you can also create other collections within a larger collection. It will auto suggest tags. You get your iCloud backup, 10 gig worth of files per month. So you can then you can start to dump in audio and video into your raindrop.io for easier searching. So a very, very inexpensive price for you to be billed yearly to use raindrop.io. That's all I have with regard to raindrop.io. I think it's a great feature. I think it's, uh, since it works cross-platform wise, you can really use it anywhere and it looks the same. So whether you're using it on a computer, whether you're using it on your phone or on your tablet, it just looks the same. And so, ease of use, the way the extension looks, the fact that you can set it up as a mini app or as a, just a clipper is great. I encourage you to check it out. Um, if you have looked at some of the other digital bookmarks that I've talked about over the past five, six, seven weeks, this definitely ranks in the conversation and should be talked about and used much like some of those other ones that may be more popular. So I encourage you to check out raindrop.io and see all of the awesome features that are available on their website. That's it for this episode of the Ed Newsstand Podcast. I really appreciate you listening to the podcast or watching the video version on YouTube because I know your time is valuable. Please check out all the resources in this week's newsletter from raindrop.io. For more ed tech resources, you can follow me on social media. You can find me on Twitter at Reynolds Troy, on Instagram at Ed Newsstand, on TikTok at Ed Newsstand, and on Pinterest at Ed Newsstand. If you would like to see a video version of my podcast or see any of my other video tutorials, please head to youtube.com and search for Ed Newsstand. You can also like and subscribe to be updated anytime I post a new video. If you're listening on any podcast platform and would like to hear more, please like and subscribe to receive updates and have any new episode automatically downloaded for you. You can also revisit my previous episodes on any major podcasting platform like Spotify, Anchor.fm, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, or Google Podcasts. If you'd like to download my app to have my podcast and newsletters right on your smart device, please check it out at ednewsstand.glideapp.io and save it to your home screen. If you don't want the app but would like to check out my resources, please visit my website at ednewsstand.weebly.com. This is Troy Reynolds, and this is the Ed Newsstand Podcast, hoping you were able to take away at least one idea for your classroom. Please be safe. Until next time. Thank you.